Hey everyone, and uh, thank you and welcome to Science Vocabulary for Forces in Motion. Uh, this is going to be a quick little video reviewing many of the words that will be uh, possible candidates for being on your vocab quiz this Friday. Again, uh, if this video is longer than 10 minutes, it'll be broken into two parts. Okay? So again, this is vocab for Forces in Motion. First words. <clears throat> Excuse me. Velocity. Um, based upon a lot of the things you may have already seen in class, um, in our discussions, we're going to actually, uh, first word being velocity, I'm actually going to stop and go to the fifth word, which is speed. Please remember speed is basically defined as a distance in a given direction. Uh, sorry, distance in a given period of time. That being said, miles per hour. So miles per hour would be a speed. Uh, meters per second, so on and so forth. So that's actually number five. So uh, now from speed, we can take that speed and we can apply a direction and come up with what is known as our velocity. So now we enter into number one. So number one is indeed velocity. And we can define it as speed in a direction. So maybe the airplane was moving at 354 miles per hour and it was flying due east. Our speed, 354 miles per hour and our direction, east. Excellent. Alright, uh, moving on here. Number two, mass. We talked about mass in the beginning of the year when we were doing the dunk tank and density. But just remember that mass is the amount of, the measure, the amount of matter and or stuff inside of an object. So the amount of matter measured in an object. Using the metric system, we like to go and keep that matter or that measure of mass in the form of grams, not pounds. Please remember, pounds is a force. All right, number three, displacement. Well, that was today's class. Displacement would be anything having to do with the measure of the difference or the distance between a start and a finish. So measure the distance between start and finish, beginning and or end. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, in the graph that we we're looking at today, um, a lot of people got it real quick. Some people were a little hesitant on it. But if you've got a graph of distance, and time. So this is distance over on the side, this is time on the bottom here. If you have a graph where you start off at zero and over time your distance gets to, I don't know, maybe seven, your displacement would be seven meters in this case. Now if your graph is a little bit different, say your graph looks something like this, where your Starting at zero, you're arriving at seven meters over time, and then after seven meters, you seem to return back to the origin there. Your displacement will not be 14, will not be seven, but instead would only be zero because our beginning and our end are at the same location. So our displacement is zero. So try to keep that in mind. There's a difference between distance And displacement. Displacement. There we go. So they are definitely different. Okay. All right. Let's see. Moving along here. Force. Excellent. So up to number four. Force. Let's slide this up here a little bit. <clears throat> Hope everyone's had a chance to look these words over at least once, and you're not doing this for the first time. Uh, Thursday night, Friday morning, before the quiz on the ride in. Um, and if need be, I can actually show you a quick little way to save this video so that if you wanted to listen to it 
through your headphones and or on your computer you could do it that way as well. Alright, so force. Contrary to popular belief, most people refer to a force as either being a push or a pull uh, in a given direction. So say we had an object here, we'll just refer to this as the box on the floor. And we had a force exerted on it. Uh, we'll go with five newtons. And that force being exerted on the box there um, would be considered the push or pull. In this case here, it's the push. Uh, I'd like to remind people when it comes to pushing and pulling, there's only really one true pull, that being that of gravity. So a lot of people will go and give you a hard time trying to figure that one out. But So uh, push or pull in a given direction, measured, and the big thing here is this N. The N stands for Newtons. And that is how we measure a force with Newtons. Alrighty. Let's see. Sliding along. I think we're ready for another piece of paper. So up to number, ha, ah, we get to skip number six. Number six is a skip. Number six will not be on your quiz. So we can jump straight to number seven. All right, number seven, uh, unbalanced forces. In the case of unbalanced forces, the best way to visualize and to think about unbalanced forces is this idea that if there are two forces acting in opposite directions, that's the big thing. So let's go and I'm going to draw an object here again. This is the box on the floor. And we're going to have a force. That was a really bad arrow there. A force of uh, five newtons right here. Let's say this force is only that of five newtons. We'll have another force in this direction acting on the box and we'll make this force uh, a little bit stronger. Let's make this one 10 newtons. And I'm going to indicate that by increasing the length of the arrow. You'll remember this in your C6 activity where you were doing vectors, that the length of the arrow is reflective of the value of the force. So in this case here, both these forces are unbalanced. They are not the same. And so we actually end up getting a uh, resultant in this case. So if I was to draw this like so, on a number line, where this was 5 and this was 10. Any suggestions or any ideas as to what the resultant would be? Well, first question is this. If they're in opposite directions, do we add or subtract? You're right, you subtract. So 10 minus 5, 5. At which point I can now draw in the resultant force and I'm going to draw it also in the direction of the stronger force here. You'll notice that the 10 newtons is obviously 5 stronger than the 5 so the resultant force would be 5 newtons and it's going to be in the direction of left, the stronger of the original two forces. So unbalanced forces usually will result in what we like to call a resultant and also um, sometimes referred to as net force. And we can see that again a little bit down the road here in our vocabulary, net force. So a resultant is a net force, and it's the sum of the two forces. Now, had these unbalanced forces uh, been acting in the same direction, say it was maybe five newtons and five newtons these two forces actually would be added together and we would have a resultant force of 10 newtons in this case here um, we've now left this idea of unbalanced forces and we're moving into something called balanced forces 
So I'm going to jump to balance forces, which is number 11. When the two forces are balanced in the same direction, we would always remember that we want to add them. And in this case, we get a resultant net force. And that resultant net force is just the sum of the two forces. Now, if the balance forces are in opposite directions, we're going to subtract. So let's try that out here. We have a 5. And we also have another 5 aiming in the opposite direction. Five newtons, five newtons. Any thoughts or ideas as to what will be the resultant force? You're right, we're going to subtract them. And so, oh, hello computer.